Hello everyone, welcome to week number eight with HRMT 60T. Today's focus will be on onboarding, training and development. In today's lecture, we're going to divide the topics into two parts. Part A, there are some questions for you to think out. Then we'll talk about human resource development or HRD. What is the process of onboarding? And in part B, we'll talk about training and development, some challenges and some successful business cases. Now let's get started with part A. These are some questions that I want you to ask before we go to the main lecture. Question number one, have you experienced successful boarding in your previous job? And that includes orientation, socialization, training and development activities. Number two, what do you think? What are some, what are the benefits of training and development for employees and their companies? Number three, what are some challenges HR team might face while running training and development? And our last question, do you know any successful company with training and development programs? Now, I ask you these questions because if you remember in week number seven, when we talked about recruitment and selection, imagine we have a great pool of candidates. We made it through the uh, recruitment process. And then we use a lot of techniques and strategies of selection. Right now, imagine some candidates, some talents have been selected through our processes. And now is the time to welcome them to our company. And that's why onboarding appears. Let me give you some facts and statistics to shed more light on this concept. 94% of employees would stay at a company longer if it invested in their career. The keyword is invested here or the role of investment, training, development. 83% of employees see attracting and retaining talent as key challenges for business success. How to deal with talents when we have them already with the team. 92% of employees say greater empathy from employers is important to boosting retention. These are based on real facts and studies. Effective employee development can increase performance by up to 25%. And the last piece of information, one in four high potential employees will leave their organizations if not engaged properly. So when we don't offer uh, training and development activities. Now, another important concept that I want you to think in week number nine is human resource uh, development or HRD. In our book, we already talked about HRP, human resource planning, and now we are talking about development. Uh, when we think about um, HRD, it operates at two levels. So a very obvious and known level is at the level of employee training and development. So when there are some strategic tools for improving business outcomes, by running some internal educational programs. There could be lots of examples. We can talk about them later. But level number one, when we offer such training development programs for our employees. However, is that all? The answer is no. The next level that requires training and development is the management level. So here, the practice of growing employees into managers. So these employees can be our future managers and managers into effective leaders. So leaders who are making the main decisions in our company. So when we think of HRD, we can think of it at two levels, employee level versus management. The next thing that I want you to focus um, on for this week is the process of onboarding. Imagine onboarding is an umbrella term and it covers some important 
sub features. Now, what is onboarding is the process of helping new hires after the uh, recruitment and selection steps adjust quickly and smoothly to the number one performance aspects, the job duties, responsibilities of their new jobs, as well as the social aspects of the organization, communication patterns and interactions inside the companies, companies' cultures, values, my personality, the company's personality, or the concept of congruence. Now, when we talk about the onboarding process, it has or it includes orientation, socialization, training, and development activities. In today's lecture, we'll talk more about them later. But before we go and give you some examples or look at more details, let's think of what are some benefits of employee training and development. So we're not talking about managers specifically, we're talking about employees. Now, what do companies gain from providing such training and development programs for their uh, employees? Perhaps you have the answer in mind, but the first thing is that, of course, when you provide training, you'll increase your productivity in that company. And also you'll reduce micromanagement. Okay, you don't need to micromanage everything. You give your employees freedom and they have this ability, this, so they can use their potentials to create something, to complete their own tasks, achieve their own goals. Of course, um, training is very essential if you want to think of uh, training your future leaders inside your companies um, to boost job satisfaction and retention, keeping our talents within the company. Now, of course, we do this in order to attract highly skilled employees to stay with you and keep working with you. But there are some, there are some other benefits we can look at. Number one, it increases consistency in your company. So different units uh, can work in harmony together and increase the camaraderies. So when we, ha we talk about this, it means that the better uh, cohesion and activities or the sense of team uh, building happens inside your company the better connections, better interactions, bolsters, or it improves the safety inside your company. And we have this ability, or we create a situation to go for cross-training. So when you receive enough training and development, perhaps you will be able to convey these skills or a set of knowledge to someone else. So employees try to mentor, try to complete each other or transfer their skills and knowledge to some new hires. And finally, companies love to do this in order to bring more innovation to their companies. Now, that was the end of part A. Let's go to part B. In part B, we're going to more talk about now training and development. So orientation is important but more than orientation like a welcome package, some informal, casual activities. I would like to talk more about the importance of training and development. Now, what's the difference? Um, of course, when we talk about these are all educational activities. In a very simple language, when we talk about training and development, we are thinking of some educational activities inside your company that are designed to improve, number one, the job performance of an individual or group. So the main focus would be improving your job performance at two levels, individually and group-based. These programs typically involve advancing a worker's knowledge. So keep in mind, A, knowledge, information, classifications, and skill sets, and instilling greater motivation to enhance job performance. That's why I put them in three categories for you. So all these activities, uh, we don't just run them to increase their knowledge. Knowledge is one thing, skills, number two, and their motivation, inspiration. 
Some people believe that training and development, uh, these are common training practices, such as orientations, uh, classroom lectures for your employees, analyzing case studies in your company, role playing, okay, simulations, computer based training, even e learning could be all uh, part of this training practices. But when we look at our book, it gives you a very simple classification. It says that when we talk about training, our focus is on present job related behavior. We're going to offer some training for our new hires in order to make sure that these guys can work properly or they are well educated, they are well set for the present position. However, we don't want to just think about the present time. We want to talk about their future performance as well. That's why we talk about okay, development. So the term okay, development talks about the future job responsibilities. So a successful company keeps these two elements together. But let's go and focus more on training. Now training comes first and then development. Um, when you want to run some training activities or some objectives, there are three areas or zones we need to look at. Now, why do we offer training? Number one, because we are expecting some desired uh, behaviors. We want our employees to treat equally, um, wisely in different positions when, while facing new customers, while giving services to our customers, or while communicating inside or outside the company. Something in business also refers to the et etiquettes inside the company. Now, more than behavior is okay, performance criteria, the outcomes, what are the main outcomes? What are the main activities that you can do properly? So even communication can be part of this category. But the third thing is that we need to get enough training, adequate training in order to perform in different conditions. For example, if you remember, when we talk about conditions, the COVID-19 situation is one of the most obvious known form of conditions. A lot of companies try to offer training programs and activities before, uh, sorry, after or while or at the time of the COVID-19 situation. Now, if you want to run it, Think of these three zones or areas. But there could be a lot of techniques companies offer for their training. Sometimes it could be on the job or off the job, or it's called OTJ or OTJ. So just OTJ is very common. So all both goes to on and off. But when we have on the job, so they might go for job rotation, they try to switch their position. So today I can be a secretary and offer some verbal help to our customers. Tomorrow I can work in an office and do other activities. So the training in different positions is called job rotation or apprenticeship. So a lot of trainings, internship or coaching can happen when we have new hires in our company. However, companies also offer some outside the company techniques, like there are a bunch of videos, lectures, okay, simulations, or projects they give you, and you can do them outside the company at your own pace. When we talk about training, the concept of digital learning is very important and is getting very popular these days. A lot of platforms um, have been designed in order to offer adequate, well-designed uh, training activities or programs. But when we talk about digital learning, digital learning tools vary on the extent to which, number one, offer okay, performance support. Uh, they give you enough materials, tools, articles, video files, forums. You can talk, collaborate, share, ask your questions, from your supervisors or the other employees can provide support. 
Another benefit is that they can offer synchronous mode of delivery and support to our new hires. Like a lot of um, online meetings, Zoom meetings or Microsoft meetings in the form of synchronous at the same time of delivery. However, because we can't offer that service all the time at one specific time, that's why asynchronous happens. So there could be lots of emails, chats, uh, discussion forums available for you. So later when you have time, like on weekends, you just go and have a look at them. Try to learn and upgrade your skills as well as skills, sorry, knowledge as well as skills, okay? After the concept of training, let's go and have a look at employee development. And development, as I told you, is like a long-term procedure. Training is short-term, development is long-term. Now, preparing the employee to assume greater responsibilities. Maybe the employee wants to be a manager one day. The employee wants to be a supervisor. And authority, often in formal leadership positions. So okay, development looks at the future of the employees to make them or to prepare them to be better managers or even leaders in the future. Um, that's why our course talent management uh, again comes here too. So talent management is the practice of preparing a pool of developed, okay, developed employees to meet future organizational challenges and opportunities. So talent management is dealing with this uh, while okay, preparing uh, employees for future opportunities. Um, the next thing that we need to know about, what are some common steps to create employee development plans? So this is very important. If you remember when in our class we designed the recruitment plan, we have something right now for employee development plans. How can we offer better, number one, training or development activities uh, to our employees? So of course, um, this is the way, this is the logic. However, some companies um, go for pre-decided or predetermined tools or packages for their employees. Uh, they have consultations with companies and they give them uh, the ready meals. Hey, use these training packages or activities with your employees or your new hires. But if you want to run a successful, long lasting, customized, it's a beautiful word, customized service or a set of activities for your employees, it's better that you do it from scratch. And when I say from scratch is that when you assess your employees needs, get information uh, through surveys, questionnaires, uh, even interviews. Then by looking at this data, you can go ahead and write your development plans. So step number one, assessing the needs of your employees. Number two, link competencies and skills to business goals. Uh, what, what are the gaps here? Um, what are the gaps between our business goals and the current level of employees knowledge and skills? How can we bridge that gap? And number three, we need to also identify some learning and development activities. When we see this gap, that's not enough. How, how do you want to bridge it? How do you want to fill this gap? Of course, you need a learning system. We need to measure that as well. And for example, you could decide to use online media uh, or the online platform for your learning and development activities or the class activities. Okay, and then number four, we need to have some resources for that. Some materials should be ready for your training program. And number five, uh, there could be some barriers along the way that can hinder our progress. Now, our book didn't talk about the barriers or hinders while running or planning our development plans, but I'll tell you um, later in, our, in my last slide today, some common challenges or barriers. 
But just keep in mind when we think of the strategies of development, they are in three areas. Companies really work hard in order to shape, build the thoughts, ideas, uh, personality, um, as well as knowledge and expertise of their employees. So when we talk about uh, cognitive, we, we talk about thoughts, ideas, knowledge, expertise. Now, how do they do that? They do that through lectures, seminars, or academic education. However, cognition is not enough. They need to do something in reality. So behavioral things happen. How do they talk to their customers? Uh, or if they're managing a smaller group of people inside their company, what is their management style? For example, the new hires were used to uh, the top-down approach. They always gave their roles directly and explicitly to the lower levels of uh, company. However, this company loves the bottom-up approach. We want to give opportunities to our employees. So how can I shape your mind? We need to have some behavioral or development strategies for our new hires to rewire their mindset. Now, how do they do that? Perhaps they use some role-playing models or a behavioral modeling, um, customer, um, for example, seller role plays, uh, some interviews, and in different models, face-to-face -face or online. Now, the last one, environmental, is very important. When we provide settings for employees to development, I love the word setting, and setting means that when we provide them with some opportunities to express themselves. Now, these are more real. So imagine the cognitive part is mainly dealing with uh, theories, uh, concepts, definitions, explanations. Uh, when we talk about behavioral, uh, it, that becomes more practical. And environmental is the most practical form. Why? Because you have to deal with or do something in real scenarios or situations. Like when your boss gives you some temporary assignments. Can you finish this in one week and submit it? And when you do, it builds you. It, ma it makes you ready for this company. So you know the structures of this company and they get a better picture of you. Now, after talking about these three strategies of okay, development, let's go and talk about evaluation. We don't just want to run training programs, development programs for employees, and then that's all. Now they know what to do, and the quality of our training program was great. Why? Because I believe so. That's not enough. In successful companies, when they really work hard to shape, develop, plan their uh, training and development activities, there needs to be uh, an evaluation method. There needs to be something to monitor, to evaluate the progress, the quality of training and development. Now, there are basically four important criteria. The first one is that you can see this from the reactions of your employees when you talk to them when you see them in their real world. You can also go for some tests to make sure that these guys are okay with the knowledge and the skill sets needed for this position. Now, uh, the third thing is that when they show this in their real behaviors while working, communicating, both at individual level, team level, or company level. And finally, we need to see this in long run in an organizational results. After a year, when we look at our annual report, we can see the progress, the role, the importance of our training and development. Now, we are approaching the last part of our lecture today, and I want to tell you some common challenges of training and development. So just, just think about this. What could be some challenges? In your previous job, when your company wanted to offer you some packages of training, 
uh, what went wrong? What was the main challenge? So number one, sometimes reskilling means that if you already have some skills and I want to reskill them, uh, optimize them, upgrade them, or sometimes upskilling. So reskilling means that you used to work face to face and now we're going to work online. So you need to be reskilled. However, you are already familiar with online environment of collaboration or working inside your company, but I want you to work with a new system, a new online system that is called upskilling. So that could be hard, uh, especially when we talk about okay, digital workplace, because it is developing, it is growing almost every day. Number two, it would be sometimes hard for employees to adapt to okay, remote learning. Uh, in the past, they all have face-to-face. -face. Now, remote can be a problem or challenge. Number three, uh, sometimes some companies use very outdated methods of training, like just lecturing, no interaction, no project, and that can be a challenge. Number four, lack of employee feedback on training can be another challenge. When you offer those programs, you need to listen to your employees get enough information. Are they happy? Are they satisfied uh, down with your activities? And number five, scaling personalized training and development is another challenge. Usually when companies offer training, that's like the all-in-one package. So they give it to a lot of employees, right? 10, 20, sometimes 100, sometimes 500 employees. But the problem is that is this training package um, customized or very related to one person? Um, what are my needs? My needs could be different. My expectations could be different. So the problem is that sometimes these training uh, programs cannot offer personalized training. And that is the challenge too. And of course, busy employees uh, don't have time for training even it is happening at our university or other similar universities. There are a lot of workshops for employees, students. However, we don't have time to get there, right? So that could be another challenge. Now, at the end of my presentation today, I wanna to tell you some successful cases, business cases with training and development programs. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about some of them in our class. The first one is Amazon, a very successful company with training and development. Number two, Marriott Hotels. Number three, City National Bank, or some people call it the Bank for Ladies. Uh, and then number four, Chipotle Mexican Grill or restaurants. And number five, Schneider Electric. So these are some, there are a lot, I know a lot, but in our class, activity this week, we're going to look at some of these samples, analyze them from different perspectives. Uh, for example, we can look at their onboarding process overall, their orientation, training, and uh, developmental strategies. Thank you very much for listening and hope to see you soon.